Hi, my name is Rohit and this is the second tutorial for Android. Today we'll talk about how to show a list activity in Android and how to use a sync task for doing background processing. Before we do anything, let me just show you the kind of functionality which you want to achieve. So you will see an activity coming up. Once this activity comes up, you will see a loading icon which says loading tweets. So it's loading things in a background thread and you'll see this list which we can scroll. Let's try to understand how we will build this component. So first thing you note is we have this feed manager class which has this list of names and message this is a dummy uh, provider of the feeds what we are doing is we are trying to sleep for three seconds and then dry and then give this 20 tweets to the person who calls them this is how we are going to simulate a network delay in your case you will have a http client which will actually go and fetch those things and you'll get a json and you'll pass a json so instead of this, we are just adding a delay of three seconds and we're building things locally. Now let's take a look at what is required to create a list activity. So this list screen class, which is the actual main activity, has to extend the list activity. This is the first requirement. The second requirement is the layout. Now in the layout over here, you will see that we have got the usual linear layout, which everything but what we need is a list view we need a list view with this particular id what i have seen is you no, no other id uh, can work but this particular id is required this is a predefined id this is not your id it's an id defined with android which is required by this list activity so we're going to set the content over here we will take a instance of the feed manager and then comes a part of load data. Now, ideally what we could have done is we could have simply got the feed from the load manager and set the data in the UI. The problem with this is that this is a lifecycle method. A lifecycle method, if it pauses for more than five seconds, you get an ANR, which is force or weight dialog box. Because Android processes are single, uh, threaded and our applications are single threaded the same thread which is often called as the main thread or in, in terms of UI it's called the UI thread you know is, is going through all the lifecycle methods and trying to execute it if any of the lifecycle method tries to take take control and be running for more than five seconds Android wants you that something is going wrong should we close this application so if you're doing some processing over here itself which might take more than five seconds because you're doing a network activity, we will get issue. Earlier, so, so we need to do things in background. This is very, very, uh, very much what we want. So this is a snippet just to tell you how we could have done that. So in this case, we would have taken a runnable. We would have said, okay, go ahead and take the tweet from the get social feed because it's going to run in background, it's fine, let it take whatever time it wants to take. And once you get the tweet, you take a list adapter, uh, which is required by uh, the list activity to load the data, and you set the data. So these two lines of data will actually, uh, lines of code will actually set the data. The problem is, this won't work, we'll get an exception. Because this is not the main thread. In Android, only the main thread is allowed to change the view. You can do background processing and background thread, like you know, network activity and everything. But when it comes to touching the UI, you have buttons, modifying them, this won't work. So typically, what we used to do was we used to get one more runnable called as run in UI. And then we would say 
hmm. there will use the result so let's say I'm storing the result as a private thing over here bad code for now then I need to run this UI thread somewhere so I would say a handler or I'll simply say uh, I'll say a handler handler is equal to new handler a handler is what runs in a main thread always irrespective of anything and it can be made to run things in particular manner so handler the post run UI now this code looks cluttered so we got two runnables one is which actually runs in a background and then it it makes sure that the second runnable runs in a UI thread well it's not a very good looking code but this is how people use to write code and then there's an the issue of where would I invoke the dialog box so let's say you know before I run things just before start I'll say you know start a progress dialog to show spinner and then when I'm done updating the list because dialog because the progress bar is also a UI component we'll say now we can stop the progress bar because we got it got the data now this code uh, looks very uh, difficult to read and maintain so we got something with us called as a sync task so let's just look at a sync task over here so in this example we are calling a load uh, data method from on create which will load the uh, load the data into the activity so what you're doing is we're defining a sync task we're saying that a sync task takes an input as a string the first thing is the type of the input the second thing is the type of the uh, progress so a sync task also has a capability of keep on updating the progress so in, in case you are showing a progress bar you can say an uh, integer or long over here and you can then tell okay I'm not 10% done 20% done 40% done so you can mention that argument over here Lastly is the result what you want. So input argument, progress, and result. Declare it. The once you declare it, there are three main important methods. One is on pre-execute, one is do in background, and the third thing is on post-execute. This method runs in the UI thread. This runs before the this method is run. This method, do in background, as the name suggests, runs in a background thread. And again, post execute methods runs in the UI thread after do background method is done running. So in this case, we are declaring a dialog box over here. And we'll say the dialog box is not showing, please show the dialog box. And in the actual background method, we will just go and fetch the data. This could be opening a network connection, doing authentication, fetching the feeds, getting the JSON, parsing them, blah, blah, blah things like those. Ultimately, when we are done, we'll do two, two things. We'll stop the spinner, the progress bar, and we'll apply the data to the adapter. This part I'll cover at the end of this video, but just assume right now this is, sets the data in the list. This has to be done in the UI thread, and this method runs in the UI thread. Ultimately, we just call async.execute. And this passes the sorop to string parameter over here, which goes over here. And runs. So this is how you use async task. So async task has different methods. Some run in UI, UI thread. Some run in the background thread. Remember, main thread and UI thread are the same thread. I'm just using different names for those. Now let's try to understand what is happening with this adapter. So now let's try to understand the concept of an adapter. On one hand, we have got this list activity, which is supposed to show objects which are represented by a list of tweets now we require an adapter so that the list activity can look at 
the list of tweets in a particular manner which it can consume. That's why you require adapter. So this adapter will convert this list of tweets into objects which are understood by the list activity. So let's go to the tweet adapter. Now in the constructor we are passing in the context which is Android context and the result. Now a tweet adapter extends the base adapter. It stores internally the list of social feeds, the list of tweets. So three more most important methods, the four most important methods are get view, get count, get item and get item ID. Let's start with get count. The list adapter, the list activity needs to know how many items you have to show. This is 20 because we remain 20 items. So this is very simple to understand. At some point it will say, okay, what's the data item at index this? So we need to say it's a tweet at the index in the list. Sometimes the data is not as straightforward as a list. So the index and the item ID may differ. That's why we require this mapping method. In this case, it's straightforward, so we'll just keep it straight. The most interesting part is the list adapter wants to show, let's say, uh, planks. So as you can see over here, you're seeing planks. The first plank has a name Rohit and hi, my name is Rohit. The second plank has Amit, I'm Amit. So you can see, I can see one, two, three, four planks at a time. So ideally I will require something like five planks in total to show any number of uh, entries. It may be thousand entries, two thousand entries. The idea is at any given time, I can only see five planks. One, two, three, four, five. So let's say it's six planks uh, or it's a five planks. So the idea is the moment Rohit, my, hi, my name is Rohit, goes above this, it's reused below as Praveen, Baba Ramdev, things like that. And the moment John, what a fine day goes above, it is reused as Hemant over here and the movement sort of nice crowd goes above it is reused as Harman this is the whole idea so the first six times I'll go into this if loop of row equal to null and I'll create this planks actually because there are no planks being supplied so for position number one two three four five six it's null I get them and then onwards I won't get the convert view as null because they'll be reused this is the idea and then all I need to do is simply rub the name and put a new name rub the tweet and put a new tweet simple as that so this is a definition of how you know uh, this adapter actually works So to summarize, in this case, we are using an async task to first of all show a dialog box spinning. Then in the background, we are getting the feed in a background thread. This could take as much time as it requires. And finally, in the post execute, we get the result from this background processing. We stop our spinner and we populate our list with list adapter. The list adapter takes takes the data as input. It had methods called as count to tell how many number of items are there. There's uh, things like get item to basically fetch which item is at which index and a get view method in which it has planks and the planks are used. Until the planks are not used, they come as null and you create new planks over here.